Hello and welcome to Arirang News Break. It's Tuesday, September 13th. Live from Seoul, I'm Han Daen. Let's start with the earthquake that drove many here in Korea into fear last night. The 5.1 and subsequent 5.8 magnitude quake, the strongest ever recorded in Korea, hit just outside the southeastern city of Gyeongju, but was felt across much of the country, including Seoul. Luckily, no one was seriously hurt, except for some minor injuries. Kim mo starts us off with the quake details. The earthquake struck near the southeastern city of Gyeongju on Monday evening at 8.35 p.m. Korea time. Fortunately, no one was killed, but eight people were injured as buildings rocked from side to side and objects fell off shelves. No serious issues with major infrastructure were reported, but scores of buildings were moderately damaged by the tremor. Nuclear reactors in the area were not seriously affected, but some reactors were taken offline as a precautionary measure late Monday night. A few KTX bullet trains halted operations, and Korea's popular mobile messenger Kakao Talk went offline shortly after the quake, but they are both running as normal now. The earthquake came about 50 minutes after an initial quake with a 5.1 magnitude hit the same area some 10 kilometers south of Gyeongju. Experts attribute the lack of serious damage to the earthquake's depth and relative lack of low-frequency energy. Ji Hun Chul, a researcher at the Korea Institute of Geoscience and Mineral Resources, said the damage was limited because the earthquake struck at a depth of more than 10 kilometers and the amount of low-frequency energy produced was small. Large structures or high-rise buildings are more affected by long-period slow-shaking quakes. He added that the earthquakes were caused by a strike-slip fault in the area, adding a release of energy from one side of the fault caused the tremors. Government authorities have heightened the country's emergency level to level 2, which is the second highest, and ordered affiliated organizations to remain alert and follow the earthquake manual. Kim mo Arirang News. Experiencing such a strong quake is new to Koreans, and many are wondering if there will be another big earthquake in the coming months or years. According to the Korea Meteorological Administration, seismic activity linked to yesterday's quake in Gyeongju is over, but there is a possibility Korea will be hit by a quake of about 6.0 magnitude in the future. They say a quake stronger than 6.5 is unlikely. Meeting with lawmakers for an emergency meeting this morning, the head of the agency, Ko yun added aftershocks have been uh, all under a magnitude of 3.0 and are becoming weaker. Switching gears now, a U.S. strategic bomber has flown over South Korea this morning as a show of force against North Korea following its fifth nuclear test last Friday. Officials say the supersonic B-1B bomber, which left Anderson Air Base in Guam earlier today, has been escorted by South Korean F-15K and U.S. F-16 fighter jets uh, as it flew over Ulsan Air Base south of Seoul. It's hoped the flyover will make North Korea think twice about carried out uh, before carrying out any further provocations. The B-1B was originally scheduled to come on Monday but was postponed due to poor weather conditions in Guam. Seoul and Washington's representatives to the long-stall six-party talks are discussing measures to counter North Korea's ongoing provocations, including its fifth nuclear test, which was conducted late last week. South Korea's top nuclear envoy Kim Hong-kyun and his U.S. counterpart Sung Kim began talks in Seoul uh, this uh, on Monday evening. More meetings have been scheduled at the foreign ministry this morning. The two officials are expected to further discuss additional sanctions on the bilateral, multilateral and especially at the U.N. Security Council level. They're scheduled to hold a uh, joint a press conference on the outcome of the talks later today, which should send a strong message to Pyongyang over its continual provocations. 
Korea's job market picked up speed in August. Statistics Korea says the country added 387,000 new jobs last month from a year ago, bringing the total number of employed to 26 and a half million. Last month's figure marks an improvement from July when the number of new jobs fell below the 300,000 mark. The ministry says the pickup comes on the back of base effect from increased employment in the wholesale and retail industries after they were hit hard by the MERS outbreak last year, as well as improved job growth in the construction sector. However, it isn't good news for everyone. The youth jobless rate stood at 9.3 percent last month, marking the highest monthly figure for August since 1999. The government's ongoing corporate restructuring drive is also taking a toll on regions where the country's shipbuilding industries are concentrated. The jobless rate in Ulsan came to 4 percent, while the figure in Gyeongsangnam-do province sat at 3.7 percent. Koreans are transitioning into vacation mode on this Tuesday as the three-day Chuseok, or the Korean Thanksgiving holiday, starts tomorrow. As with years gone by, traffic heading out of Seoul is expected to build throughout the day as people head to their hometowns for some family time. The nation's traffic agency says more than 37 million people, around three-quarters of the entire population, will be on the move by car, bus, train or plane over the Chuseok holiday. Holiday. With 80 percent of people planning to travel by car, expressways are going to be bumper to bumper, with roads forecast to be busiest between 7 and 8 p.m. today as people knock off work. Plenty of Koreans are leaving the country as well. Incheon International Airport says it expects to process a daily average of 160,000 passengers from Tuesday through Sunday. And that's all for now. Stay tuned for more top stories here on Arirang. Thank you for watching.